All right, welcome to our scene on the metabolic pathways. Here we're going to talk about some really important metabolic pathways, including glycolysis, represented by this part of the scene over here on top, gluconeogenesis, represented by the highlighted parts over here, and as you can see, it's actually quite similar to glycolysis. And it's kind of like the opposite, but we'll explain the differences. We're going to talk about pyruvate decarboxylation, and then the Krebs cycle, or the TCA cycle. In future videos, we'll perhaps build upon this scene over here to include other metabolic pathways, but here we're discussing the most basic ones that we need to know. So let's jump right in, and let's begin by talking about glycolysis. It all begins with the gliding collar cis. She's apparently a cis, and she glides off of buildings with her cool collar that has wings. So she's the gliding collar cis. Gliding collar cis for glycolysis. This reminds us that the beginning of this scene over here is going to be about glycolysis. So let's take a look. She noticed that somebody did not type on this computer screen over here. They actually glued something onto the screen. Apparently, somebody glued a code onto this screen. They don't like typing on computer screens. They like gluing things on computer screens. And over here, they glued a code onto the screen. We could even see the glue over here that they used. Glued code for glucose. And in fact, the code over here happens to be glucose, just to instill in our minds that we're talking about glucose. So, glycolysis begins with glucose. But then she noticed that as the computer screen over here, with the glued code on it, descended, a fossil ended up on the sixth letter, the sixth letter of glucose. It's actually not a full fossil skeleton, it's just a fossil face. So fossil face on the sixth letter. So this is the glued code six fossil face. Glued code six fossil face for glucose six phosphate. This reminds us that the molecule produced from glucose is glucose six phosphate. So again, glucose was converted to glucose six phosphate. Now, if you take a look, I put a visual over here of a kind ace. It's like an ace that's very nice, kind ace for kinase, just to remind us that the important enzyme which converts glucose to glucose 6-phosphate is a kinase, and specifically hexokinase or glucokinase, which I have written over here. The arrow next to it over here is relevant to gluconeogenesis, which we'll get to. And this explosion over here helps us remember that energy, or ATP, and specifically one ATP molecule, is required for this step of glycolysis. Then the gliding collar cis realized that the screen descended further, and now there was no more glued code on the screen. Instead, there were frog toes, a picture of frog toes. Frog toes for fructose. And we noticed that there's still the fossil face over here on one of the toes, on position six. So this is the frog toes with the six fossil face. Frog toes with six fossil face for fructose six phosphate. Fructose 6-phosphate is molecule number 3 in glycolysis. Now, when the screen descended further, it acquired a second fossil face on position 1. So there's a fossil face on position 1 and a fossil face on position 6. 1,6-bisphosphate. So these are the frog toes with the 1,6-fossil face. Frog toes with the 1,6-fossil face for fructose 1,6-phosphate or fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And again, the explosion helps us remember that again, energy or ATP, and specifically one ATP, is required for this specific step. And if we take a look over here, we see the arrow which took us to this screen over here where we note a K on the arrow. This is actually a perfect K. It looks pretty good, right? A perfect K. Perfect K for PFK or PFK1. PFK1 is the enzyme which converts fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And we should also recall that this is the rate-limiting step of glycolysis. Perhaps the fact that this K over here is perfect should help us remember that this is the rate-limiting step of glycolysis. Now, when the screen descended further, it didn't turn into a screen anymore. There were only four screens. This time it turned into a person. The really interesting person with the glittery shirt. People call him Glitter Al. This is Glitter Al over here. Now, Glitter Al over here happens to be hiding, which we'll talk about soon. 
We also note that he has a three on his shirt, again with the fossil face. So this is Glitter Al with the three and the fossil face. Glitter Al, who is hiding with the three and fossil face, for glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is one of the molecules produced in this step of glycolysis. Now I say one of the molecules because there are actually two molecules produced, because fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is split to produce glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and DHAP. Represented by this guy over here. This guy's face is literally the letters DHAP. And perhaps he always says, Hey man, what's the happening? What's the happening? Or what's the hap? The hap for DHAP. This reminds us that when fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is split, it produces not only glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, but DHAP, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. DHAP, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, is then quickly converted back to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So in a sense, two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate are produced. So moving forward from now on, we have to remember that every molecule will be doubled. Okay, now we get up to the most random part of the scene over here. We recall that Al was hiding, right? His name was Glitter Al who was hiding. What was he hiding in exactly? He was hiding in this box, which had a sign on it that 1332 was far too great. Apparently someone was really in love with the year 1332, and they wrote on this sign over here, 1332 was far too great. 13, or 13, reminds us of 13, and far great reminds us of phosphoglycerate. Far great is relevant to all of these molecules because they all end in phosphoglycerate. 13 bisphosphoglycerate, and 3 for 3 phosphoglycerate, and 2 for 2 phosphoglycerate. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, then to 3-phosphoglycerate, and then to 2-phosphoglycerate. The two batteries over here that are forming remind us of the two ATP molecules that are produced during the conversion of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate. Two ATP molecules, one for each 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And the two NADHs over here remind us of the two molecules of NADH that are produced in the formation of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And then we go down even further, and we see a pipe coming out of this box over here. Pipe for PEP, which is phosphoenolpyruvate. 2-phosphoglycerate is converted to phosphoenolpyruvate. Then if we take a look at this pipe over here, there is this random pirate face over here coming out of it. Perhaps the pirate's full body is inside the pipe. I don't know. But this pirate face over here reminds us of pyruvate. And the fact that there is this kinase over here again reminds us that a kinase performs this conversion of PEP, phosphoenopyruvate, to pyruvate. And specifically, the enzyme is pyruvate kinase. And again, the two batteries that are forming remind us of the two ATP that are produced during this step in the production of pyruvate. So just to review, we started with glucose, and then we got glucose 6-phosphate through the enzyme hexokinase or glucokinase. Glucose 6-phosphate was converted to fructose 6-phosphate, which was then converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate through the enzyme PFK1. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate was split. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and DHAP were produced. DHAP was converted back to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So we had two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. From glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, we got to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, 3-phosphoglycerate, 2-phosphoglycerate, and then PEP, phosphoenopyruvate, which was then converted to pyruvate through the enzyme pyruvate kinase. Pyruvate is the final molecule produced in glycolysis, and it may then continue to pyruvate decarboxylation as well as to the TCA cycle, but we'll talk about that in the next scenes, alright? I hope you enjoyed this scene on glycolysis. Take care.